Royal Caribbean's new main dining room menus are out. We've got our first look at what they are, what they entail, and what you can look forward to when you go on a cruise up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Ever since Royal Caribbean announced they were going to be testing a new main dining room menu and then subsequently said that they were going to roll out a new main dining room menu, there has been a lot of, let's say, intrigue about the new main dining room menu changes because the main dining room is a staple of any Royal Caribbean cruise. It's where most people go to have dinner while they're on board a ship, and as a result, what they serve in the dining room is going to have a lot of effect for a lot of people. So naturally, there's been a lot of interest in what the new main dining room menus look like. If you haven't been following along, Royal Caribbean started testing new main dining room menus on their ships a couple of months ago. Essentially, they were trying to get an idea of what this new menu would look like and tweak some of the options. The test occurred on Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Seas, and in late 2022, Symphony was the test bed for these new menus, and they tested it for a number of weeks leading up to the end of the year. And then Royal Caribbean said, we're going to take some time, review the feedback, and then come back with a new menu that we're going to roll out to the fleet beginning in January. So with that in mind, we sent one of our writers on board Symphony of the Seas because we got wind that Symphony would be the first ship in the fleet to have the new finalized versions of the new menus. And of course, just like you, I wanted to see what this all entails. So let's start off with number one. Why is Royal Caribbean changing the menus? Well, Royal Caribbean said, among other reasons, the swiftness of service is the primary reason for implementing the new menus. Essentially, Royal Caribbean believes that the length of the meal can be unpredictable. And in some cases, in a lot of cases, actually, the length of the dinner service can really be a problem and a complaint that Royal Caribbean is seeing a lot of issues with. In addition to the new design, each night's menu has a new theme. So there'll be French or Italian or Mexican themes. There are still no sugar added and vegan options available, as well as premium selections. Another major change that you're going to find with the menus, of course, is the lobster tail. A lot of people take their lobster very seriously. And in one change that you're going to expect on here is that you can actually be limited to only one complimentary lobster on the lobster night of the cruise. And then any additional lobster you'd like to order would cost extra. So we'll get into this more a little bit. Let's look at the new menus. I know you're all interested in seeing the new menus on there. Now, if trying to read all these menus here on this video is not the easiest, or you want to share this with other people or just refer to it back later on, you can actually get a full PDF download of all these menus by simply going to royalcaribbeanblog.com slash new menus. There you'll be able to sign up and get a download of all these menus in full format so that way you can refer to them later on, share with your friends, etc. So as I mentioned, every menu that you have has a theme to it, starting with the Welcome Aboard menu. And the Welcome Aboard is basically American cuisine. The menu features some classics from the old menu, including the Caesar salad, shrimp cocktail, escargot, New York strip steak, spaghetti bolognese, royal cheesecake, and ice cream. Speaking of the classics, one other major change you're going to notice with these new menus is there's no longer the classic standby. So in the old menu, you would have whatever the menu items were, and then a subset of menu options that did not change every day of the cruise. Basically, you could always have these on all nights. That's no longer the case. Now what you see here are the options available to you. Let's move on to French night. In comparing the French night menu to some of the test options here, the primary feedback clearly that Royal Caribbean had was among the desserts because not much has changed other than the desserts. And in this situation, we've seen some updates to the dessert menu when Royal Caribbean was testing this last month. Next, we have a look at Italian night. Italian night is another very popular option. In fact, Royal Caribbean had an Italian night. I didn't necessarily call it that, but it was certainly an Italian-themed menu in the old menus here. Some of the options here that really stand out, of course, is the minestrone soup, the classic tiramisu. You've got the New York strip steak, chicken parmesan, and, of course, a risotto. Next up is Caribbean night. Caribbean night features things like the seasoned pork chop and coconut jumbo shrimp, as well as a stuffed grilled eggplant, tiger shrimp, and a tagliatelle pasta. Something else you're going to notice about this menu changes is the chef's recommendations at the top do not double down in the main course. In the old menu, you'd have everything in the main courses, and then the chef's recommendation was a selection from those options. But in the new menu, the chef's recommendation is in addition to the main courses. Moving on to Mexican night, of course, you've got some Mexican options here, including the roasted poblano pepper soup. That's a holdover from the old menu, carne asada. You've also got pulled pork enchiladas, among other choices, tortilla soup. Lots of options for you. The royal night 
is the night where you're going to have lobster tail available to you. As I mentioned earlier, gone are the days of ordering multiple lobster tails for no additional cost. If you'd like to have a second lobster tail, you'll be charged $16.99 plus 18% gratuity. Now, you might be wondering, okay, what about other things? Can I order more than one of the cheese tortellini pasta here as an example? The answer is yes. There's no limitations from what we've determined on Symphony of the Seas during this particular sailing. And there's no limitations on ordering multiple entrees, appetizers, or desserts. It's really just the lobster tail that has that restriction in place. And finally, we have Mediterranean night. And Mediterranean night features options like the braised lamb and a turkey dinner, clams and linguine, among other choices as well. Now, something to keep in mind, by the way, is that these seven menus are actually just seven of more menus that exist. In fact, Royal Caribbean has developed menus for up to 10 nights. So that way, if you happen to be on a longer sailing, you won't have to repeat menus until you get beyond 10 nights. In case you're wondering, the kids' menu has not changed. Here's a look at the kids' menu, and kids are allowed to order, by the way, not only from the kids' menu, but also the adult menu. It's their choice as to what's available. Heck, as an adult, you can order off the kids' menu. I've done that a couple times in situations in which I just didn't really see anything else I wanted, or I was just really in the mood for chicken fingers. It happens sometimes. So what's different about the menus? One change is more of a cohesive theme to each night with different cuisines and cooking styles highlighted in each day's menu. Look for themes, as we mentioned, like Italian, American, or Caribbean themes with the chef's featured choices listed at the top. Something else guests may notice is the removal of the classic section, which we talked about, where those subset of menu options are available every night and never changed. Royal Caribbean is also limiting everybody to one lobster tail for no additional cost on the evening that broiled lobster is available. Now, I actually asked Royal Caribbean Senior Vice President of food and beverage, Lincoln D'Souza, about this change because obviously the lobster change and limitation there is something that stands out for a lot of folks. And basically what he said is that it's a reality of a couple different things, but primarily it's limitation of sustainable lobster available. Roller Creamy can only buy 90% Marine Stewardship Council MSC certified food, which means that lobster needs to be either farm raised or wild caught. And a recent shift in Maine lobster purchasing due to environmental concerns with right whales has places even like Whole Foods halting purchase of the item. So as a result, Royal Caribbean can, really can only buy Canadian lobster that is still MSC certified. Lincoln also mentioned the financial challenges of having unlimited lobster tails at dinner. It is the single most expensive commodity we buy as it relates to protein. And so that's really the reason that we've had to apply this, this chart. I mean, it's a super expensive protein. There's nowhere, by the way, there's nowhere on land today, including the grocery store, you can go in and buy a lobster tail that we serve, the size that we serve at that price point that we are selling it for on board the ship. And I understand people have been accustomed to getting three, four, seven, 12, 18 tails. <laughs> but the reality is we want people to have a really good experience. But our menus are really designed everywhere, frankly. Our menus are designed to be an appetizer and entree in the main course. We want you to have a great experience. And so if somebody wants to indulge in an additional entree or an additional appetizer, yeah. we want them to. We want them to have that ability to adventure adventure by trying something they've never tried before. Sure. But the intent of our menu has never been, you know, all you can eat lobster. That's right. never really been the intention of how we've designed the experience. We've designed the experience to really enjoy, as you see our dining rooms and gorgeous dining rooms that are created to have a family dining experience where everybody can sit around the table, try something new, enjoy their meal, but it's never really been, you know, eat as much lobster as you want. It's not, you know, it's just not the intent. I mean, obviously we have the wind jam experience. We want people to eat and we want them to indulge because you're on vacation. But at the same time, that you know, that, that part of it is about sustainability and it's also about what's right, right from a kind of just a approach for our business. I have no doubt that as you're watching this video, seeing these new menus, you've got your own opinions on everything that's happening. In fact, most of those comments down below this video are going to be sharing a lot of that. And Real Caribbean is definitely going to be listening to the feedback because they want to make sure that it's an important aspect to how they review the menu. Because it's been a few years since Real Caribbean last updated their menus. And during the testing phase, Royal Caribbean actually sent a team of six people on Symphony of the Seas who were responsible for conducting in-person meetings with 30 to 40 passengers every day of every sailing, in addition to email surveys that were sent out. Now, Mr. D'Souza mentioned when I talked to him that there might be even modifications going forward, and depending on the feedback, they could tweak and alter the menu as it goes on. But really, what Royal Caribbean is looking at is a more consistent dining experience. They really want to have a meal that lasts around 75 minutes. Prior to the menus, passengers could spend 95 to 120 minutes at dinner, and a shorter dinner service allows people to be able to enjoy their activities during the cruise vacation and be more predictable. 
When Royal Caribbean says that they want faster service, they're not saying getting everybody in and out in 45 minutes or half an hour or anything like that. They're just trying to be a little more predictable in the experience. And that 75 minute window is what they're looking at. In fact, as of the recording of this video, our writers on Symphony of the Seas time their dinners. And the first night it took 74 minutes and the second night, 71 minutes. Both cases were at traditional seatings in the main dining room. So, so far off to an interesting start. Of course, you're probably wondering, okay, well, when will the new menus be on all ships? I've got a cruise coming up in insert date here on blank of the seas here. Royal Caribbean expects the new menus available on all ships by early February. The current plan is to begin this new menu deployment in the month of January. And then by early February, it should, emphasis on the word should, be available on all ships across the fleet. So there you have a look at the new menus. We're going to have more information about the new menus, including a look at the food and some more in-depth research and what our thoughts were based on the experience from Symphony of the Seas. But I wanted to give everybody a first look at what they can expect. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think of the menu changes? Which items are you most interested in trying out? And which of these themes is your favorite so far? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way YouTube lets you know when we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from royalcarbianblog.com. And we'll talk again real soon.